Well, over the last week, the weather has changed considerably. And work has started on building the stonework around the edge. So you can see here that we're utilizing a, a slightly more sort of blockier, um, less formal way of, of edging the stonework here. And the idea is that once the pond is filled up, it's only really the top layer of stone which is going to be visible and the rest of it is just there as a screen to conceal the, the pond liner. At the moment it still sort of looks a little bit, bit of a jumble, but once there's more stone all the way around the pond and once we've got the pond level built up, it will all start to come together. There's an awful lot of rock going into this. The overflow has had to be upgraded. Um, it transpires that the four inch pipe that's coming off of the roof of the house um, wasn't just a, a sort of a minor bypass to top the pond up. In, all, in, in actual fact, the majority of the roof rainwater is, is filling into the pond. So this is really just a, a glorified um, sort of soak away. So the two inch overflow has had to be uprated to a four inch overflow. And that's in place now via a, a tank connector. And again, as I always do, just on a bigger scale, we've got a, an elbow which can go on here. This can be articulated to help to calibrate the height of the pond. And we can also extend this with a piece of pipe if we need to. Um, a leaf guard put over the top of this, and then this area can be concealed with some stonework. So, the next few days are gonna be spent continuing building up this edge of stone all the way around the pond. Dave's task today is to backfill all these voids that are left here. So these need to be filled up with concrete to about an inch or so below ground level. But the important thing is here that the filling has to be higher than what will be the maximum water level. It's very tempting just to chuck soil in here and, and sort of conceal this. Um, but the problem with that is once the pond is filled up to its maximum level, which is gonna be around this sort of height, these voids, of course, are going to contain water as well. And soil or grass that's in here is going to really soak away and um, end up reducing the water level quicker than we'd like. So this needs to be filled up to just above water level, but just below ground level with cement or concrete. And then once that's cured, that will allow one to put a layer of soil and then some turf and bits and pieces around this lot. More sub-basin MOT going down to fill that void over there so that we can start thinking about the, the paving. The cogs are turning and we are making progress. This is my sad face. Unfortunately, all that lovely weather had to end and now autumn seems to have set in very quickly. But progress is coming on nicely with the pond and I'm at quite a, a critical stage here of beginning to assemble the, the start of the cascade or integrating the start of the cascade with the rest of the pond and the stonework. And I just wanted to show you how the, the liner overlaps uh, and the relationship between the, the main kind of spill stone and the, and the pond itself. So this is where the, the first stone, the first spill stone is gonna sit and overhang and pour into the pond. So as I've been building up stonework around the edge, I've got to this area here now. These are, these are the keystones or the foundation stones for what will be that, that spill stone. And it's really important that this is at the right level. I want to try and set that spill stone so that it sits at or slightly below kind of mean ground level um, to keep it looking natural. But of course it's important that it's high enough that there is a drop of sorts into the pond. Um, Ensuring that the liners overlap is really important. Now you could do this out of one, one liner, but of course there's going to be an awful lot of wastage um, from the main pond liner in doing so. But I've got a, a sufficient overlap here and I've made sure that in laying the pond liner that the bulk of the, uh, the excess has been brought this way so we've got most of it for the cascade. And I want to make sure that maximum water level is going to be, you know, sort of teetering around the top of this stone. And it's important to make sure that the overlap of the main pond liner ends up terminating at a, at a point which is much higher than the maximum water level. So here I've got the main pond liner, which will be sitting underneath the cascade liner and it will be trimmed and it will, it will finish up at this second stage of the cascade, which is substantially higher than the pond. The cascade liner will then come over the top of this and overlap and will sit underneath the spillstone 
and be trimmed neatly to finish up on these foundation stones here so it's not going to be noticeable and that ensures that if there are any potential leaks from the cascade it's going to remain within the main pond lining which will force the water back into the pond and stop any leaks i'm running a, a hose up in the cascade here inch and a half heavy duty pipe work which will be running all the way through the the stonework at the back here to the other side of the pond if you can hear me over this wind and this is going to be an additional supply to the cascade so we've got the main filtration discharging to the top of the waterfall and then we're going to have a secondary pump which is going to terminate halfway up the cascade so in nature top of a stream starts off on a smaller collection and as the stream grows and works its way downhill it gathers momentum and it picks up more flow and by the time we get to the bottom we've got you know a bigger flow so again it helps to keep it look more natural so we're running a second Awaza Aquamax pump which is going to be discharging up in the sort of centre of the cascade just to beef up the, the final spill which is going to be quite a substantial stone and we want a nice you know curtain of water going over that so this is going to sit underneath the, the spill stone this will be covered by stonework um, lots to get on with again today as always I seem to say that a lot but this is a really important thing if I can get the spill stone in today and then I can carry on working my way around the pond continuing with the uh, sort of peripheral stonework I'll be happy if I get that done I always appear to be gloriously sunny and wonderful in all my videos, but it's not always that case, sadly. Today, thank you Storm Francis, miserable day. I don't think there's an awful lot that I'm going to be able to get on with, but it is a good opportunity for me to see what's coming off the roof and see how much water comes down off of that four inch um, discharge from the, from the property. So I shall come and show you what it's doing. We've only really got a light drizzle at the moment, but you can see there's still a fair amount of water which is, is now running off into the pond here. This is a fantastic way of, of naturally topping the pond up. Um, and this is, this is too good to, to lose really, this water. Obviously, during the next, the next sort of construction phase and continuing on with the stonework, I can't, I can't allow this pond to fill up too much. But I don't want to waste this water. So I have set up another large blue holding tank, similar to the one over there so that I can pump this down again another sort of foot or so, retain that water, um, and next time it rains, hopefully, that'll give me a little bit of a, a margin, a bit of breathing space, before the pond gets too full and I have to pump it out again. But I, I don't want to waste that water. About another three days of, of stonework, and that will be a complete ring all the way around the pond, and then I can start to do the inside um, retaining wall for the planters all along this side of the broad shelf here right the way around to where you can see the pipework and that sort of stack of three stones that's going to have a retaining collar of stone and be backfilled with shingle and then over here where I'm standing this is another broad shelf and this is also going to be a planting area so this will have a retaining wall and, and be backfilled with shingle also once that's done then the pond can be filled up and I can focus on the on the final touches building the, the stream and the cascade and then commissioning the whole thing. But despite the rain this morning, it's not been a total waste of a day. Um, I've been buggering about placing rocks for the lower section of the cascade. Um, I've been using a product made by Awaza, essentially an expanding foam called Foam Fix. I've also heard it called uh, Rock Fix as well. And the idea is that you construct um, your feature, your cascade, your pond, you know, positioning of the rock work. Um, dry stone, wedge little rocks and bits and pieces into position to sort of hold those stones into place. And then you fix them more permanently by squirting this expanding foam in amongst all the cracks in the joints. Um, and it's particularly useful for cascades. So you can see that I've, I've started the lower section. But it's still early days yet. Obviously there's lots of trimming involved, the water level's not up to its correct height. So we're going to lose half that drop, the water level's going to be about here. 
but as you can see from the still stone above it, you can hear me over the water, you only need four or five inches of drop to create a nice natural looking fall. Uh, now I'm just demonstrating this using my sump pump that I use to clean out the pond. This is about 17 or 18,000 litres an hour flowing over this. Um, we're going to have a much, much larger flow once we incorporate the cascade from the uh, filtration system, which will be discharging up at the top, and then the secondary auxiliary pump. We're going to have probably about 50% additional flow over the top of this. So those side stones there, which aren't doing an awful lot at the moment, they will come into play later on. And if needs to, we can, we can tinker and turn it down slightly. These are great positions here to conceal little lights. So I'd like to try and put some sort of light underneath the curtain here and perhaps further up the cascade another light as well. So you can see here how it's constructed. Obviously I showed you originally the main pond liner and then the overlap for the cascade liner. And here this is the expanding foam which is filling up all the joints between the stonework. It's encapsulating the rock, it's keeping it in place, but it's also diverting all of the water over the stones as opposed to under the stones. And it's also stopping the, the, you know, occasionally you'll get a run of water, a slow trickle that flows this direction, which you don't want. Um, so it's, it's diverting everything where I want it to go. When this is complete, obviously the liner will get trimmed and this expanding foam has been finished above water level. So again, a bit like the concrete I was telling you about earlier on behind the edging of the pond, this is the same principle. I want the foam to finish above water level, slightly below ground level, so I can then fill these voids with soil, grass, etc. It's not gonna wick and soak away too much water and it's not gonna have soil in direct contact with standing water, um, but there will be a certain amount of moisture that the roots are gonna be able to collect as they percolate down through. Quite natural looking. And certainly once all the edging of the liner is, is cut away, the ground is shaped. The soil level raised slightly. At the moment the stonework is slightly above ground level. I want everything to be at ground level or slightly below. So I've got to do a little bit of filling in this area. But I can see light at the end of the tunnel now. And uh, the, the end of the job. Good morning. Well, it's now officially the start of autumn. First of September. Beautiful, beautiful day today. Just the ideal sort of weather I like to work in. Not too hot nice and clear and um, progress is good so today i will complete the outer ring of stonework you can see i've got that small section about three or four feet left to to render into place uh, and it will allow me to start doing the inner circle of stonework so these areas that are going to be the planting zones i can mortar into place and build up that secondary sort of retainer wall here using this cropped york stone walling so this week, weather looks good, hopefully, it'll be a very productive week. And by the end of this week, it should really start to come together. I mean, the, the main jobs to do still, obviously, are completing the, the planting zones um, and then backfilling those with shingle. I've got to complete the cascade and then I've got to start work on building the paved area. Three main jobs left to tackle. But if I can get the bulk of that done this week, it's really going to start to come together and then the fun can begin with the dressing and the planting. Well, things are moving on at an escalating pace now. At this sort of juncture of the job, all of these final sort of dressing points and um, decorative kind of you know, bits really start to speed up and, and make the job look complete. So yesterday the bulk of the retaining wall has been put in for this planting section. I've still got another one to do over here and possibly another small section over here. We brought in a load of this 20 mil gill mill gravel which will dress this area and which will allow my marginal plants to get planted directly into it. But now it's the, the birth of Sally, the statue. She, she's found her rightful place. She was originally sort of stood in the pond on a, on a plinth that we had to construct a few years ago. Um, but now we've incorporated this shelf into the pond. She's got an area where she can stand. And I think she'll look very nice sort of looking in that direction towards the cascade, providing a bit of additional interest at this side of the pond. Obviously this is the seating area, so we're gonna have the, the sound of a, a tinkling sort of feature beside the seating area here from her. She'll be uplighted, illuminated, um, and then sort of dressed 
framed either side with some, some nice marginal plants. She needs to be raised up a little bit. Water depth is going to be currently sort of calf height on her and I don't want to lose too much of the statue, particularly as this area is actually going to be raised up slightly once the final paving height goes in. So we need to get a foundation for her. I've got a nice big solid 600 concrete slab which I'll render into place as the main sort of supportive structure and then onto that she's going to stand on two standard solid density concrete blocks which I'll separate and leave a gap in the centre and then that will allow the, the pipe work and cables and bits and pieces to, to run without being trapped by the weight of this because she's quite a hefty quite a hefty feature right so I'm using a mix of rapid cement so this is going to go off and I'll be able to place her on the plinth later on today. I've got about half an hour before this is really a solid mess, so I've got to work pretty quickly. It's nice to be able to get this done today. And if I'm not quick, my cement mixer will end up being a sorry solid mess as well. Now I'm doing this really just as a belt and braces sort of precautionary approach. You know, the ground is nice and solid at the moment, but being clay, once the pond is filled up, underneath this at some point, it's gonna to start to soften up. And if it's on a particularly soft patch of clay, she's not on a particularly large base for the size and height of her. She might start to wobble and tilt. She's top heavy, all the weight's up here. I don't want her going into the pond because she's gonna be very difficult to get out again. mallet is, is the right tool for the job and always check your diagonal isn't that right Dave? Yeah. this is already going off well, the mix is off but it? Yeah, the mix is alright in a minute to be a little bit sloppy here because all this is going to be underwater and under gravel crucially so we're not going to see any of this. So actually looking at the height of this I might not raise her up on the blocks. It might be too high, we'll see how it goes. But I need to put her on something with a gap running through the centre so that I can feed the cables and more importantly get that, that hose that connects to the base of the, the feature. Good, job done. About an hour, and I'll be able to start working with this. Dave's mucking around at the edge of the pond over there, doing his fill of, of soil and addressing the edging. And actually, if I show you what a, what a major part of the job this is, once you've lost the lining and you've lost that white fleece, as you can see behind him, suddenly the job really does start to look complete. And going on in the future next season, once these plants have re-established and we've incorporated some more plants that can kind of cascade over and, and break up that stone line, that's going to look lovely. Morning, it's another day. You can see here that we have completed the marginal shelf and good old Sally is up and running. The 
we've had a bit of a jet wash and cleaned up. I think Dave got a bit carried away with the jet wash because it looks like she's lost some of her clothing. I don't remember any nudity. Nice feature though. Lights in position. So we're now going around, clearing up all of the loose bits of rock and cement that have landed on the shelf from, from the build. Trimming away some of the excess liner. So all of the additional liner I've put down to cushion the stonework. I'm starting to trim to neaten up. So you can see here, there's a few big sort of flappy pieces all the way around. So I'm going around with a pair of scissors and very carefully trimming this away. Uh, it's a bit of a heart in the mouth moment. I do have to be extremely careful. It would be very easy to, to go through the main pond liner if you're not careful. And, uh, and that would cause a lot of issues. So extreme caution here. This is the second marginal shelf, which has gone in. That went in yesterday. And then once this is done, later on this morning, we're gonna be able to empty the holding tank of reserve water and start to fill the pond for the first time. And over the next 24 hours or so, it might take a bit longer to fill. We'll finally be able to get the pond up to its proper, full, maximum level. And that'll be the first time that, that I or anybody has seen the pond at this correct level. Fingers crossed that I've got all my levels right. And it'll look very different with an extra 18 inches, two feet of water in it. Once we lose this pond liner, it's going to look almost complete. 